Hello and a very good evening to all of you. I'm Sheetal. Good evening. I'm Ishwar with Sheetal, and uh, we are going to help you today uh, to understand and get acquainted with the CUT. This is the last session, and uh, we are going to take you to uh, the roadmap for cracking it with a lot of confidence and uh, you know with a lot of strategies we are going to discuss today. Yeah, so your exams will be starting on 21st of May. I believe this is going to be the last live and we want it to be as much helpful as it can be or as as much it can prove to be. So the preparation part is almost done now. Today we are just going to discuss the strategy with you. We will tell you how much of time you will get for the exam and what your strategy should be in accord, uh, uh, with respect to the selection of the questions. And don't worry uh, kids, uh, you know, uh, the way you people are nervous, I know that uh, uh, the exam strategy and the questions and everything, they usually pose this anxiousness in our mind. But if we know the paper inside out, if we know all the strategies that what we are going to do that day, uh, so you become very confident and that that's what we are gonna uh, uh, you know sharing with you that that how to go about uh, everything in the last uh, few hours and days uh, to prepare for the exam absolutely right sir and I believe we have all ha have we have already experienced this anxiousness and nervousness of the exam and the questions right we do understand that exactly so without any further ado let's get into the video so the first thing is the sections. We will quickly discuss with you how much of time you will get for each and every section. So you already know that this time you will have three slots each day. So we do not know what will be the time period of that slot and what will be the timings of those slots. It is yet to be announced. But let us discuss what we already know. So I have written language, the first thing. So 13 languages, you must have opted one medium from those languages. And out of the 20 languages, you were given a selection choice of those languages, which I believe most of the students would have selected English only because we've all uh, studied it. Hmm. So let us say you have selected the English. Out of the 50 questions, you have to do 40 questions for which you will get 45 minutes. Guys, it is very important to understand that you will be going for 40 questions and the time is 45 minutes because here... Uh, you know, the, the idea of managing your time is very, very important. Yes, ma'am. Like, for example, in the RCs, you mm. take some time to read the passage first and then you attempt those six questions from that passage. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So, language is done. Second is your subject. So, out of 27 subjects, you were supposed to select maximum eight subjects if you have already selected a language and a GT paper. So, this one is GT. Right? Uh, subjects. Out of the 27 subjects, let's say you've selected one subject, uh, you just had to do 35 questions out of 40 and again the timing was, the timing is 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. The last one is GT. You have to do 50 questions out of 60 questions and the time limit will be again 60 minutes. So you have good enough time to use and to invest to do the right set of questions. Sir, shall we get into the language part now? Because we are, yes. we are both verbal teacher. We will discuss the strategy of verbal now. Mm -hmm. So, handing over it to you, sir. All right. So, uh, guys, we will be having uh, these kind of mix of, uh, uh, you know, questions and topics uh, in our verbal section. We'll get RCs. Uh, we'll be uh, having three, three, three RCs, yeah. three RCs, and every RC you will be having six questions. So total, we are going to get eighteen questions uh, from the RC. How to go about RC? So this is one of the question. Uh, usually, every student thinks that what is the right strategy to go for the RCs? Is it that the, I, I read the uh, RC first and then read the questions, or shall I read the question first and then uh, go for the you know RC and then try to answer the question? What is your uh, idea, ma'am? See, I believe this is very subjective. It depends upon the student. There are people who would go, who would want to have a glimpse of the passage and then see the question. Then there are students who want to just focus on those areas of the passage where they can get the answer. It's perfectly fine. Uh, you can decide it according to the marks you are giving. See your performance in the marks. If you feel looking at those six questions first helps you to focus on the passage more, I think that will be a wonderful strategy for RCs. That's right, ma'am. So it's very subjective. So uh, what ma'am said that going through the marks. So marks would help you. We still have time enough to, you know, uh, look forward for that uh, particular way that whether to go for 
reading the comprehension quickly first and then answering the questions or whether you you are comfortable by reading the questions and the options and then approaching the comprehension so just check that go for the marks as many marks as possible before the exam and uh, develop your strategy wherever you feel comfortable coming on to the vocabulary part so vocabulary questions can be asked uh, in in two three different mannerism like the uh, first thing is uh, they may ask you antonyms or synonyms they may ask you uh, questions uh, based on one word substitution they may ask you questions uh, based on analogy and spellings also so guys it's very important that you understand that uh, vocabulary you uh, vocabulary cannot be learned in uh, in a day or overnight you know so whatever you've been uh, preparing the way you have been preparing the rc the books you've been reading so you might have gathered uh, words you know so this is the time the last moment uh, the last few days you need to revise because retention is very very important so if you have developed certain word bank uh, consciously subconsciously uh, it's, it's important that you will be able to utilize it on the exam day so whenever it is about antonym and synonym guys I would suggest you to be little careful about uh, reading the direction because sometimes you simply uh, attempt one question which is based on antonyms and you think that uh, the next question is also based on the antonym only but uh, it may be the, uh, in the direction it is mentioned that you need to se select you need to go for the option which is similar in meaning not the opposite what do you think fam or the farthest and the opposite in meaning will be the antonym question yes yes right so first of all let us quickly see i have just written we've just written vocabulary here how many types of question will you get from vocabulary you will get your antonyms synonyms analogy question and one word substitution as per the last paper last year's exam there were four questions from each of these areas and the so spelling questions will be there also ma'am yes the spellings will also be there the fifth mm -hmm. area absolutely right so any 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 tip uh, you think uh, uh, is going to be useful uh, for uh, these kids uh, to help the spelling answer the spelling questions yes uh, that is a very genuine question for the spelling question if this uh, if it is the one word which is given like in four different spelling it becomes very easy because you can see they will be using a lot of vowels together or a lot of consonants together in the wrong choices mm -hmm. so don't fall for those choices there will always be some vowels between the consonants so i think that thing can help right and i hope that you don't need to get to know at this point of time that what are vowels and what are uh, consonants yes I hope that <laughs> absolutely right sir right right okay so any any strategy uh, uh, we can uh, follow for analogy questions yes for the analogy question see though we are going to see the last year actual paper also we will discuss some questions with you but before that the analogy <coughs> question so may i please have yeah, the pen please. so you know that it will be in this form a is to b can be anything mango is to fruit they are both mango is to fruit so a is a type of b chair is to table they are a complementary pair mm -hmm. Shoes and socks is again a complementary pair. Right. So there will be a pair in the question. You first have to decode the relationship of that, and then in the same structure, try to fit the rest of the options also. That will be your right answer. Remember to follow the pattern. Like if the pattern is moving from A to B, you know, and the options, the the the, the four options which you will get over there, they will be having four options right, in every sir. question, hmm. right? So the the pattern is going to be A to if it is moving from A to B. You need to look for the pattern which is moving from A to B, from right. left to right. So don't go for that thing that something is uh, you you you're making the same pattern or same relationship from right to left. So that's going to be the wrong uh, option. Hmm. So maybe there is going to be this one option given to you, which still makes the same kind of pattern or same kind of relation, but the direction is also very very important, guys. For example, I said mango is to fruit. Mm -hmm. What if in the option they have given you furniture is to chair? Now the order is reversed. Right. So just be right. careful of the order also. Yes. Yes. Let's quickly get into the para jumbles now. The para jumbles you can count it. It's it's uh, under the RC only. Its orientation is that of reading comprehension. It can be one lengthy sentence that is broken into pieces and given in different option. Mm -hmm. It can be different lines of a paragraph also that have been jumbled over there. You just have to understand the story behind it simply. What the story is, what is he saying or talking about. We will see some example also. And then you have to arrange it into the right order, order so that it make a cohesive sentence or a paragraph. That is para jumble. I think in para jumbles, ma'am, uh, do we take the help of the options? 
yes sir we can take help of the option wherever for example if it is sentences that have been jumbled go for one such sentence which introduces you to the topic or gives you a general idea and uses proper noun the pronouns will come later on for example uh, we are talking about people of india people of india is the thing we are discussing wherever uh, you find the word there in sentences there uh, the the sentences with their word or their pronoun cannot be the opening sentence right then you can make some mandatory pair for example one of the pair will give you a cause the other sentence of that pair will give you a uh, effect of that right, so like right. that you can form some pairs also you know the the as you said that if you are able to make a pair and you're very sure about that particular pair look at the options option a b c d so if you have made the pair like uh, cb is the pair you are very sure about look for that particular pair in the options and wherever you trace that cb pair present uh, eliminate the rest of the options and focus on that so sometimes the options are going to help you to attempt a question quickly see time management once again i'm talking about that it's very very important you need to attempt the paper very smartly so instead of spending time in thinking of all the sentences to be put in order what if there are only th there is only one option which puts a as an opening sentence so you know that a is an opening sentence and, and then, it saves yeah, a lot of time a lot of time yes yes yes, yes. absolutely yeah. right mm -hmm. so moving on to the grammar question in the last year they did not actually give you any direct questions from the grammar though there were questions on, on the basis of fill in the blanks from the passages and this year we do not know we can anticipate that they would give you some extra questions of grammar but anyways brushing up your fundamentals at this point of time is very important it will help you with the fill in the blanks question of the passages right so and the last one is idioms and phrases for which again you do not have any grammatical rule their usage is conventional so try to do most uh, most used idioms and phrases or probably you would have been doing some idiom and phrases quickly revise the those idioms and phrases that is the strategy for this particular section yeah and uh, i think when we talk about idioms and phrases uh, i think you don't need to go for uh, certain idioms and phrases which are very difficult i think uh, if I say the level of difficulty, what we are expecting in the idioms and phrases, it's, it's going medium. to be yeah. uh, medium and moderate. So uh, whatever uh, used in day-to-day -day life and whatever you come across while reading different kind of books or uh, during your high school, uh, whatever you've learned, whatever you've, you've seen, I think it's going to be from there only. Just like we can you take can, up a hmm. few examples like simile, metaphor, personification, hyperbole and uh, these kind of things. Right. So you can easily guess the meaning of those idioms and phrases. See, because when you will see the option, now when I will show you the actual paper, you'll get to know some of the options are so silly and absurd that they anyways cannot be the meaning of that. Right. So right. that way it becomes easy. And one more part which Sir just mentioned was figures of speech. There will be four to five questions from figures of speech also. Mm -hmm. So again for the figures of speech only 12 to 15 uh, figures of speech were asked repetitively in all the exams in the previous year quickly go through my live i've already made a live on the literary devices you can refer to that it will only take you 20 minutes to learn all the definition and see some example of uh, literary devices or figurative devices mm -hmm. right. now before moving on to the next section where we are going to discuss the skills required I can see some of you are commenting that GT is not compulsory, English is not compulsory. Here I want to say that I know that it's not compulsory. It's just that we are discussing if you have opted for GT or you have opted the English language paper, then this video can be helpful for you. For example, some of the universities like many colleges under DU University, they've asked for the English paper. Then you need to go for it. It's, it's not compulsory. I'm saying it again, so do not misunderstand it. Right, so right, now let's right. get into the video. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sir, please discuss some skills required with us. You have had such an experience with students and you know what kind of problems they face. Right. So guys, it's, it's very important, first of all, that you need to understand your uh, pattern of the exam inside out. And uh, it's, it's very important that you understand that how many number of questions are going to be there, what time is there, because we really underestimate this aspect of uh, uh, you know the paper that number of questions are there and uh, what time you need to take 
uh, to attempt what particular question. So when it comes to RC, so I divide the whole paper into two portions. One is RC, po RC, RC portion and the non-RC portion. So how much time would you take to uh, attempt the three comprehensions? It's very, very important that you manage your time very well uh, with the help of practice and mock exams. Uh, uh, you, you you reduce the time to attempt all the 18 questions. It is one of the most scoring uh, area, the reading comprehension, one of the most scoring area uh, to, to enhance your marks. So do not skip on to any question in the reading comprehension. Read quickly and try to attempt as many questions as possible. And when we talk about comprehensive ability, it's, it's very important that even when you are reading very fast, do you understand, do you comprehend that what the comprehension is saying? Uh, is it coming from the author's perspective or what kind of terminologies are used over there? What is the subject area? What is the purpose? What is the main idea present in the comprehension? You don't need to read it again to understand that. One quick reading uh, uh, should be uh, uh, you know, uh, sufficient to answer the six questions. So it's, it's very important that you, you need to develop this comprehensive ability that what you read quickly, you retain it to answer those six questions, not to uh, you know, go back to the particular line or a paragraph or something like that. The right choice of questions when I talk about it, it is very important skill to understand that what are your strengths. You know, it's always good to know your strength, but along with that, it's also very important that you understand and you, you accept and recognize your, uh, you know, uh, uh, problem areas and probably your gray areas. Uh, what is your Achilles heel? Probably it is your, it is the spellings or maybe it is the idioms or figure of speech or it is, uh, you know, antonym, synonym or vocabulary or which particular part or maybe the grammar area. Which so, again will come with the mock tests. Right? Yes, when you, when you attempt mock exams, you get to know that what particular set of questions, try to draw a pattern in your mock exams that what set of questions, what type of questions are going uh, wrong again and again. So uh, go for those questions late you know once once you are done with all the questions which are easy uh, you do the, those first and then you try to approach those questions which may need more time so again time management is very very important that right choice of questions to be done first and then uh, the other questions yes do not underestimate the power of elimination method because not every question is uh, you know gonna give you uh, simply a direct uh, uh, answer from the option it's better that when you are not able to think of the right answer and if you are confused between two options try to eliminate reverse reverse you can see that what cannot be the answer uh, leaves you with one particular option which is surely the answer and definitely when you do your marks and right now at this point of time when exams are there uh, you need to pull up your socks and stay focused stay focused these few days uh, uh, it's, it's going to play a big role in, uh, you know, uh, securing a seat in your uh, dream university. So stay focused, guys. Right, ma'am? Very important. Anything sir. you would like to add to uh, any of these skills? Yes, sir. I was going through the comments and Aryan is saying that idioms and phrases are sometimes so tricky. What if we are stuck with two options? So first thing we need to understand is practice is the only thing that will help you with idioms and phrases. And second thing, when you are again stuck with the two option, try to catch the key words. Does it make sense in real situation? Can there be one such idiom or not? And even after that, if you feel it's that difficult, which uh, in the previous year, no such options were the close contenders, to be very honest. If you still feel it's that difficult, then I believe you may skip that particular question. Yes, because you're right. Uh, idiom, like I used the idiom just, just a few minutes back, Achilles heel. Either you know the meaning of that or you don't. You cannot make a random guess. Uh, we have a negative marking. Right. right? Absolutely so. right. A negative marking of minus one. So for every correct answer, you will get five marks. But if that question goes wrong, you're not just losing five marks. It will be minus one. In total, you will be losing six marks because of one wrong question. Right. That's an insight, man. That's a wonderful approach. That's a wonderful perspective, I think. You need to understand that uh, when you pick up a question and you think that nahi mujhe ye karna hi karna hai ye question, so it becomes little difficult because you you spend that much of time in that particular question. Uh, that time you could have given to certain question which which can go correct by you know uh, taking a little uh, extra one or two minute. All right. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. So now before moving on to the actual paper of last year, we will discuss some of the questions with you. What I would like to say here is now that you have an option of skipping 10 questions, do it very wisely as sir has also told you RCs are highly scoring. 
uh, you will get all the answers in the passage. What should your strategy be according to CUETRCs? Simply remember or try to at least form a structure in your mind while reading mm -hmm. which all ideas were discussed in first, second and third paragraph. Mm -hmm. So that you can trace the direct questions from the passage. But when you come across the spelling words, the antonym synonym word or idiom phrases and you have absolutely no idea about it, I think those should be the 10 questions that you can skip. One more point I'd like to add over here ma'am that we, we were discussing the vocabulary. So. Uh, vocabulary questions can be asked in two different mannerisms. One is like if they simply ask you that what is the antonym or what is the synonym of this particular word, right? And there is another way to check that uh, thing is that uh, they give you a context. They give you a sentence or something. Over there, if you simply look at, would that word be highlighted or underlined on something in the sentence? Will it they, may be or it, it may, may not be, but the obvious will oh, the, the option or that sentence will obviously be highlighting it or else it will be the only difficult word there. You'll get to know that they're yes, asking an antonym yes. for this question. Right. This so do not word. simply look at that word and try to answer because one option is probably going to be the literal meaning of that word. But over there, you are supposed to mark the option which is a contextual meaning, not the literal meaning. Like when we say season, season has a literal meaning like winter, summer or something. But when I use it in a sentence that please season my pizza, it becomes, uh, you know, the spices, oregano or something to put over there. So you need to be very careful because, you know, you would try to uh, go for the literal meaning as soon as you see that highlighted or underlined word. But uh, you need to look at the whole sentence to derive the meaning of that the word. The contextual meaning. The contextual meaning, yes. Right. And one more thing, for example, you are doing antonym synonym question. You have to find out uh, the, the opposite word for the given word. Let's say you do not know the meaning of the word given in the question. Out of the four choices, there are high chances that three of the options will be synonyms. Obviously, three answers cannot be there. So that fourth word, which you do not know, is the right antonym of the word given in the question. So you can take a lot of hints from the options. So today we are not discussing too much of strategies of how to remember words, how to learn words, because we are hardly left with two, three days now. We do not even know when your paper will be. So now smart work is something you need to focus a lot on. Right, sir, shall we get into the paper then? Yes, so without wasting any time, let's look at the paper. So let's discuss one last year paper. This is July slot one. And as you can see, the starting is with one passage. Now, in all the passages of English paper, in all the slots exam, one thing was common. Three passages were there. Some of the questions were fill in the blanks type of question. One question was on the basis of match the following. So let's quickly see this one. This particular passage, as you can see, is based on laughter and the importance of laughter. So a person is, has been mentioned here. Now these are the things you need to focus on. W. Matthews quotation is given here about the treatment of the laughter or about the treatment of your ailment. That if you cannot afford medicine, you can go for laughter. It is a cheaper uh, way of curing yourself of all the depression and ailment. So they can again ask you a question on the quotation of the uh, this person, Matthew, as you can see here. So this is second question of this passage. Sir, uh, would you give some uh, uh, space to us? Yeah. So this is match the following question. Here, W. Matthews, you have to complete the sentence. Two, three things you need to keep in mind. You should be able to quickly trace the question directly from the passage. Second, whatever matches you're making, they should be grammatically sound. The sentence should not be, the sense should not be distorted of that sentence. So this question you can see you can do easily. W. Matthews is a state of mind doesn't make sense. May sometime lock one's jaws again doesn't make sense. So it should be says because this person's quotation has been given here. So this B goes with this one. For those who dislike medicine, a good joke invoking laughter is prescribed. To take the keywords. Here they are talking about the medicine. Here they are talking about the prescription. Obviously, these two lines goes together. So like this, you can see one was matched the following. And the writer says that he would never make a laughing stock of himself. This means what? Now look at them, how smart they are. They've given you one idiom. They've picked it from the passage itself. In this case, you either know the meaning of the idiom, 
If you do not know it, read the context given in the passage and you can easily guess the meaning of that word. So, should not disrespect others but here we are talking about making fun of uh, he is saying that one shouldn't be a laughing stock himself. Why would he talk about the other people? So this can be eliminated. Should not disrespect others is also on the same line. Should not allow others to ridicule and make fun of him. Should quarrel with those. Here we did not talk about quarreling. Again, this is out of context. Should go on a pilgrimage. Why are we discussing pilgrimage here, first of all, when it was not given in the passage? Don't go with one such option, which is out of context. Obviously, answer is the first one. Right, let us see if there are some other good questions from it. Which according to you is the best title of the passage? So they have given you a question on idiom phrases also. They've given you match the following also. They simply check your aptitude, your verbal aptitude, how, how comprehensive your abilities are to understand the passage. So here this one is about the title of the passage. Can we say crime and punishment? It wasn't discussed in the passage. Gaffo, gaffo. So, gaffo is one form of laughter when you laugh very loudly. It's a, uh, a chuckle laughter, you can say. So, many such words were discussed here. Gurgle was there. Gaffo was there. So, why to only talk about gaffo? When author told you that there are different types of laugh and smiles. So, our title shouldn't be so narrow that it should not justify the passage. Laughter should be avoided by camels. Why are we talking about camels here? Lock jaws and bad teeth. This was again not the concern of the passage. So we will go with the option C, which is laughter is the best medicine. Right, so these were quite easy questions. He is not laughed at who laughs at him. Can you just first. help them to understand that how did you make the meaning of the uh, gaffa over there where it was used in the passage? Okay, the contextual meaning you're yes, saying, sir? Yes. Okay, let us trace the word here. Quickly. It's a, it's a, yes. Gaffa. So it is nice to have a good laugh. But a guffo may sometimes lock one's jaws. And so it is suggested that those who enjoy a loud, loud guffo uh, to go slow and... Why to go slow? Obviously, because it's a great chuckle. How will you uh, lock your jaws? Only when you are laughing very loudly. So you can guess the meaning of this word from the context. And this was just an example of guessing the meanings of the word. And you can see that there is a descriptive word used over here just before this word. So you can see that loud Gaffa is something like right. laugh and laugh but a gaffa may sometimes so what may sometimes we are talking about the same thing that is laugh so that that's the way you uh, need not to worry about any of the new term which you are not aware of uh, you know uh, to be uh, 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 guessed in the answer if there is anything uh, which you need to guess in the answer all right and my uh, very intelligent and regular students they've already been dropping the right answers and that is very impressive guys so, now I would again hand it over to Sir to discuss some non-RC questions because it will take a lot of time if we will discuss three passages with you. So, let's now jump to the non-RC. Right. So, area. let's see that if we can find non-RC questions in this slide and I'll stop uh, probably. Okay, I would again take some time to appreciate and to thank Anjali and I'm very grateful that you found our CUET book to be so helpful. So our CUET books are available on Amazon as well as Flipkart and it will help you greatly. Even for the students who are going to appear for this exam like next year, they can buy it. The students who want to do the mocks, they too can buy it. So there are uh, books on subjects also for general test and for English language. So I think you found it helpful and that's very great. And one more thing, one of the student is saying that sir, uh, can you please use a little bit of Hindi? Okay. So, okay, we're going to keep it bilingual, Hindi as well as English. Certainly, certainly. So, so you can also, uh, what, uh, there, there's this one question I'm picking up. Ye wala jo question hai, ye, uh, mujhe lagta hai ki aata hi aata hai. Humne har ek set mein, har ek exam mein ye dekha ki ye, uh, is type ka question jo hai, wo aata hi aata hai, uh, which is uh, in the tabular form. And isko karne ke liye, aapko uh, do cheezon ka dhyan rakhna hai. Ek wahi, jaysay meinne thodi dher pehle baat ki thi, ki ek to aap, को श्योर होना है कि किसी भी एक ऑप्शन को सबसे पहले नैरो डाउन करो लाइक इफ आई वुड से दैट जंप लीप मेरे लिए बहुत इजी है शायद आपके लिए स्ट्रेंजर एंड अननोन बहुत इजी है तो अगर आप श्योर हो जाते हो कि स्ट्रेंजर अननोन के साथ कंफर्म है सो लुक फॉर द कॉम्बिनेशन सी विद थ्री एंड वेयर इट इज जस्ट सेकंड एंड थर्ड जस्ट सेकंड एंड थर्ड जैसे ही आपने सेकंड एंड थर्ड देखा 
फिर इसको फर्दर नैरो डाउन कर लेते हैं एक और जिसमें शायद फिफ्टी फिफ्टी या जो भी चांस है आपके पास आप उसको देख सकते हो जंप लीप तो ये कहां पे है मॉरल्स एंड वैल्यूज इट्स इट्स आल्सो वेरी इजी टर्म राइट सो दैट गिव्स अस व्हिच ऑप्शन दैट गिव्स अस ऑप्शन डी एंड फोर्थ या सो दिस वन थर्ड वन इज द राइट आंसर यस नो नो द फर्स्ट वन आई थिंक द फर्स्ट वन या ए फॉर फर्स्ट वन यस तो इससे हमारा आंसर बहुत इजीली नैरो डाउन हो जाता है और हमारा टाइम भी बहुत ज्यादा बच जाता है इसके अंदर एब्सोल्युटली ग्रेट आई विल पिक अप अनदर क्वेश्चन दिस सेज या जो मैं आपको थोड़ी देर पहले ही बता रहा था सिनेनिम्स एंटोनिम्स के बारे में कि किस तरह से वोकैबुलरी पूछी जाएगी आपसे सो लुक एट दिस क्वेश्चन गिव द सिनेनिम और अ वर्ड विद सेम और सिमिलर मीनिंग ऑफ द अंडरलाइन वर्ड इन द फॉलोइंग सेंटेंस मैम आपसे पूछ रहा था कि क्या वो वर्ड जो है वो हाईलाइट होगा या अंडरलाइन होगा तो आई थिंक वी विल गेट अ अंडरलाइन वर्ड दो वी डोंट हैव इट ओवर देयर इन द स्क्रीन बट आपके लिए वर्ड अंडरलाइन होगा Articulate is the word which will be uh, which is uh, there in this question. Just keep up and focus. करना है. But अगर मुझे articulate का मतलब already पता है और मैं उसको फरावत से mark कर देता हूँ. That's a wrong approach because it is used over here in a sentence. I'll read the sentence for you guys. As she grew older, she became more articulate. अब कोई इंसान जब बुजुर्ग हो रहा है बड़ा हो रहा है. It is it has a positive connotation. The पूरा का पूरा sentence जो है. तो हमें एक पॉजिटिव चीज ढूंढनी है व्हेन समवन इज ग्रोइंग ओल्ड और ग्रोइंग ओल्ड गेनिंग एक्सपीरियंस कुछ तजुर्बे के साथ हमारे पास एक्सपीरियंस uh, आ जाता है तो एथलेटिक तो डेफिनेटली नहीं हो सकते आई डोंट हाँ आई डोंट बिलीव दैट कि हमारी दादियां और नानियां जो हैं वो रेस लगाती हैं और स्प्रिंट uh, लगाती हैं रोज कनिंग खैर मैं इसके बारे में बात नहीं करना चाहता नेगेटिव मैंने आपको पहले बताया था कि इसकी कॉनोटेशन पॉजिटिव है कनिंग की कॉनोटेशन जो है वो नेगेटिव यस सो एक्सप्रेसिव डेफिनेटली सो आर्टिकुलेट को अगर मैं रिलेट करने की कोशिश करता हूँ किसी भी एक वर्ड के साथ तो वो एक्सप्रेसिव बहुत इजिली आर्ट आप इसको ब्रेक भी कर सकते हो आर्ट आर्ट जो है वो एक्सप्रेस करता है तो गाइस इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू स्टार्ट प्लेइंग विद द वर्ड्स एंड यू ऑलवेज बी वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टेड विद द वर्ड्स व्हेन एवर यू आर ट्राइंग टू लर्न वोकैबुलरी उसको ब्रेक करो उसका रूट वर्ड देखो उसका प्रीफिक्स देखो उसका सफिक्स देखो उसमें कोई भी एक ऐसा पोर्शन है वर्ड में जिसको आप अपने एसोसिएशन मेथड से याद रख सकते हैं सो ओवर हियर आर्टिकुलेट एक्सप्रेसिव लाइक आर्टिकुलेशन राइट सर आर्टिकुलेशन इज प्रोनंसिएशन So you can guess from there also. Expressive as you pronounce, so you sound very clear, and the other person can easily understand you. Right, so when you're expressive, right. yes, yes. And uh, I think uh, we can go for another question. I'll see. Uh, Let's probably. take a different question type. Yeah, which different question types? देख लेते हैं हम यहाँ पे. I think we'll, we can go for this one. This says Sorry, that choose. The, yeah. Okay. Farthest in meaning. Now they haven't given you antonym. They. They've not given the word opposite in meaning. They've asked you farthest in meaning. So mm -hmm. this is an antonym question now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the word is choose the option which is farthest in meaning to the word wonderful. So we all know what wonderful is, right? So it can be can it be magnificent? Now here, if you did not read the instruction carefully, you may go for magnificent. Mm -hmm. But magnificent is a synonym, a similar meaning word. Right. Hazel, maleficent, and ordinary. Let's say you do not know the meaning of the hazel, right? Maleficent. Here the root word is male, which is negative. So it's it's opposite of benevolent. Mm -hmm. So who a person who thinks of ill will of other people. Right. So what are we left with? We are left with the word ordinary. Mm -hmm. Wonderful is opposite. Will be ordinary, mm -hmm. right? मैम ने अभी आपको दो वर्ड्स दे दिए बहुत अच्छे बेनेवलेंट बेनेवलेंट आप लिख सकते हो अगर आपको नहीं पता इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट एंड वेरी वेरी गुड वर्ड बेनेवलेंट इसको ब्रेक कर सकते हैं बेनेवलेंट सो बेने इज गुड बेने इज गुड बेनिफिट यू वुड हैव हर्ड ऑफ यस 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 benign sir malign benign, benign. Man, yeah exactly these all words so right. we always say ki uh, okay english is very difficult how many words will i remember you can take up so many hints from people those who speak around you try to take up the words try to play with those words and you will enjoy it like anything right so good let's take up some other words sir so shall we take a uh, analogy question Okay, rearrangement. Let's do this one. Para jumbles. So rearrange the following jumbled parts of sentence to make a meaningful sentence. Now they have given an easy one. If it is uh, sentences of a passage, then it may be a little tricky. 
but if it is a jumbled sentence just one word or one sorry just one sentence has been jumbled then it's very easy let's read all of these can lead to a lifelong scar can we start with a sentence with this word can lead to a lifelong scar but what what can lead to this we need to fit that what which means we need to identify the subject of the sentence so subject of the sentence will come first sorry sir so a uh, lifelong scar a moment of fun and repentance and merriment did you see here the kind of adjective they are using the kind of words they've used fun also they've used repentance also repentance is quite opposite to merriment and fun now both these two options start with a conjunction and if you have written of fun you cannot write repentance after that you use the conjunction and to put two similar kind of words together and these two words are not similar so how will we go about this one it will be a moment of fun this is the subject we are discussing in the sentence a moment of fun uh, and merriment because merriment goes with fun they are similar words we can join them using this conjunction and can lead to a lifelong scar and repentance so repentance goes with scar so this will be the right order so it was c e a b and d great the ek bar dekhe zara options mein hame kuch help mil sakti thi isse agar hum farafat se options ko dekhte so c e a b d सिर्फ एक ही ऑप्शन में सी यू आर श्योर अबाउट इट कि मेरा सी जो है वो ओपनिंग सेंटेंस होगा या ओपनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द सेंटेंस होगा आपने देखा सी इज द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन हैज सी इन इट मार्क इट एंड दैट्स इट इफ यू आर श्योर अबाउट इट टू मेक डबल श्योर सी आपको पता है कि आपका ओपनिंग पार्ट होने वाला है सेंटेंस का एंड यू नो दैट कि लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सेंटेंस व्हाट डिड यू गेस मैन द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सेंटेंस टू बी डी या राइट अब आप देखो कि आपको कंफर्म हो गया कि डी मेरा लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ द मेरा सेंटेंस यहां पे एंड होएगा आपने देखा डी दो एरियाज में है दो ऑप्शंस में आई एम सॉरी फर्स्ट में भी है और थर्ड में भी है तो फर्स्ट आपका श्योर है कि सी जो है ओपनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द सेंटेंस होगा ई e नहीं हो सकता जैसे मैम ने एक्सप्लेन किया मार्क फर्स्ट ऑप्शन मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सेविंग योर टाइम लेट्स लेट्स वी आल्सो शुड बी मूविंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ राइट राइट सो लेट्स टेक अप सम अदर क्वेश्चन सो लेट मी नो व्हिच क्वेश्चन शुड आई टेक ओके वी आर डन विद द सेंटेंस रीअरेंजमेंट या ओके शल वी टेक वन एनालॉजी क्वेश्चन या दैट्स फाइन आई थिंक वी कैन ओके हाउ अबाउट वी डू दिस वन analogy yeah. question right. choose from so did you see there were four analogy question they have taken four question from each and every area from antonym four from synonym four from figures of speech four one word substitution four questions again so they'll test you uh, all kind of abilities that you have in verbal your the verbal aptitude also and the reading comprehension also so will you discuss this one sir okay choose from the given options the pair of words which carry a relationship similar to virtual and real so we know that these are kind of opposites so we will first of all uh, eliminate all the option that are not the synonyms genuine and sanguine atmosphere and hydrosphere air and oxygen human and homo sapien this is synonym air and oxygen quite similar to each other so the word we are here left with is in this sense it will be atmosphere and hydrosphere right so similarly they can give you words they can give you questions like this also okay this looks very interesting to me ma'am can can we discuss yeah, this yeah one? yeah sure okay so this it is says, uh, phrases yeah so i think it is uh, fish practices bring downfall necessity is the mother of invention okay this is something we need to complete the whole phrase in this yes. so uh once again phrases either you know the meaning of that or not uh but yahan pe hum logon ko phrases ke meaning nahi guess karne sirf itna hona chahiye ki aapne phrases ya to padhe ho ya sune ho to agar aap yahan pe in sab ki combinations dekhte ho to i think you can easily make it out uh and and we will again use uh the uh help of the options aapne koi bhi inme se agar uh idiom dekha hai Uh, जैसे कि फिश के साथ क्या जा सकता है नेसेसिटी शायद ये वाला मैं पिक कर सकता हूं क्योंकि ये बहुत कॉमनली सुना होता है सबने नेसेसिटी इज द मदर ऑफ इन्वेंशन 
ये बहुत कॉमन है चलिए डी के साथ सेकंड को हमने कंबाइन कर लिया लेट्स सी दैट कि इसमें कौन सी ऑप्शन है जिसके अंदर बी और सेकंड है इसके अंदर मेरे पास ऑप्शन जो है बी के साथ सेकंड की ऑप्शन अगर मैं देखता हूं सो इट इज फर्स्ट ऑप्शन देर इज नो अदर ऑप्शन चलिए इसको डबल uh, श्योर करते हैं एक मुझे कंफर्म हो गया कि नेसेसिटी इज द मदर ऑफ इन्वेंशन बर्ड्स वाला शायद आपने सुना होगा uh, या फिर फिश वाला ये भी बहुत कॉमन है फिश आउट ऑफ वाटर फिश आउट ऑफ वाटर बीइंग अनकंफर्टेबल इन सम सिचुएशन और समथिंग लाइक दैट सो फिश आउट ऑफ वाटर इज ए इज मेकिंग गुड पेयर विद फोर एंड दैट इज ए विद फोर एंड मैंने पहले क्या बनाया था बी विद टू सो आई एम नारोइंग डाउन माय करेक्ट ऑप्शन टू बी वन एज द राइट ऑप्शन द राइट आंसर राइट मैं एक बार बाकी भी देख लेता हूँ इसके बाद मैं चेक कर लेता हूँ सी के साथ वन डज इट मेक एनी सेंस नॉट क्विकली करप्ट प्रैक्टिस ब्रिंग डाउनफॉल मतलब बैड डीड्स जब भी कुछ गलत काम किया जाता है तो उससे नुकसान होता ही होता है डाउनफॉल मतलब नुकसान होना नीचे आना एंड लास्ट कॉम्बिनेशन जो मेरा है दैट इज डी के साथ थ्री का डी इज बर्ड्स बर्ड्स ऑफ द सेम फेदर फ्लॉक टूगेदर सेम नेचर वाले सेम कैरेक्टर ट्रेट्स वाले लोग एक साथ रहते हैं एक साथ रहना पसंद करते हैं सत्संग मतलब कि एक जैसी संगत के अंदर रहना पसंद करते हैं ये भी एक सेंस बना रहा है बाकी भी देख लेते हैं इसका मीनिंग मैं आपको बता देता हूँ फिश और वाटर मैंने आपको बता दिया नेसेसिटी इज द मदर ऑफ इन्वेंशन जब चीज की जरूरत होती है तो ऑटोमेटिकली इन्वेंशन चीजें अपने आप बन जाती है जैसे हम एक और इडियम uh, कहते हैं वे देर इज वे देर इज वे देर इज विल देर इज वे सो सिमिलर टू दैट एंड बाकी मैंने आपको बताई दिए सो वी कैन नैरो डाउन आर आंसर टू वन ओवर हेयर and all the people who were answering one yes you were absolutely right so keep it up right so let's now move on to spelling question as you can see here four questions are from mujhe hamesha se bahut dar lagta tha spelling wale questions se aur spellings ke sath hamesha se mujhe bahut problem rahi to maine kya kiya maine hamesha se words ko tod tod ke unke phonetics ko unki sound ko samajh samajh ke spellings ko learn kiya आई थिंक हमारे पास इतना ज्यादा टाइम नहीं है कि हम लोग उन सब चीजों के बारे में सोचे अभी इट्स इट्स बेस्ट दैट कि आप ऑप्शंस की हेल्प लें एंड अभी जब जब भी कभी कोई नया वर्ड आपके सामने आए जैसे मैम ने बताया था कि उनके वॉल्स उनके कॉन्सिडेंट्स की कॉम्बिनेशन देखें और देखें कि कौन सा वर्ड किस तरह से स्पेल किया जाता है जब आप किसी भी वर्ड को प्रोनाउंस करेक्ट करेंगे तो उसकी स्पेलिंग्स ऑटोमेटिकली आप करेक्ट सोचेंगे अगर आपने प्रोनाउंस गलत किया किसी भी वर्ड को तो उसकी स्पेलिंग्स भी ऑटोमेटिकली गलत गलत हो जाएगी राइट सर राइट नाउ यू विल गेट टू नो इट फ्रॉम दिस ऑप्शन इफ यू कम अक्रॉस दैट पर्टिकुलर वर्ड इवन वंस यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट देयर इज समथिंग अनॉर्मलस विद द रॉन्ग चॉइसेस सो इदर यू सी दिस वन पैंडेमिक इदर यू सी दिस वन फिजियोलॉजी नाउ इन फिजियोलॉजी दे हैव फर्स्ट यूज्ड पी एच डबल ई व्हेन डू वी यूज डबल ई इन फिजियोलॉजी इट अगेन लुक्स वेरी ऑकवर्ड सो वी इजीली गेट टू नो P H I S I O L O G Y. Okay, I understand this one can create a little bit of confusion. But haven't we seen words like physics, physic? Why do these words always have P H Y? So there again, from there we can guess the correct spelling that it should start with P H Y, not P H E or P H I. So this confusion in English is because unlike Hindi, the letters do not stand for the same sound. One letter can have different sounds. so the way to get to know these is to learn or to at least come across more words to expose yourself read more and then you will catch the words so again physiology you can derive from physics and physique and physical activities all those words have phy not phe or phi right so let's do some more question isko dekhen ma'am bohemian yeah yeah sure will you discuss this one sir okay bohemian is the one word substitution for uh... so this is a one word substitution question they may give you like this also let's read all the phrases sir and then let's guess it okay unconventional lifestyle matlab uh, uh, kuch aisi cheez jo ki hum aam taur pe nahi karte aur kuch uh, ajeeb tarah se zindagi ko jeena that is unconventional lifestyle jaise sadhuon ka ho sakta hai maybe ऑर्थोडॉक्स uh, ऑर्थोडॉक्स एटीट्यूड 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 जो हमारे बुजुर्गों का होता है हम मानते हैं ये ये मत 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 करो वो मत करो वो एंड ऑल दैट खाओ ऐसे मत पहनो यहाँ मत जाओ इतनी रात को मत पढ़ो <laughs> सुबह जल्दी उठो सो दैट इज ऑर्थोडॉक्स एटीट्यूड उसके बाद आइलैंड ड्वेलर आइलैंड ड्वेलर इज जो लोग आइलैंड पे रहते हैं राइट जो आइलैंड पे रहते हैं वही पे रहना वही पे ग्रो करना एंड पॉलिटिकल एडवाइजर 
जैसे कि जो पॉलिटिक पॉलिटिशियंस को हेल्प करते हैं उनकी uh, उनकी मदद करते हैं बाय बाय गिविंग देम सम काइंड ऑफ एडवाइस अच्छा मुझे एक यहां पे एडवाइजर से मैं अपने अपने आप को रोक लूं डू वी हैव टाइम मैन यस सर श्योर सो मुझे एक वर्ड uh, याद आता है एडवाइस एंड एडवाइस हु कैन हेल्प मी टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन दोनों में क्या डिफरेंस है एक होता है ए डी वी आई एस ई और एक होता है ए डी वी आई सी ई कैन यू जस्ट राइट ओवर ड्रॉप इन योर आंसर्स एवरीवन कम ऑन कम ऑन जल्दी बताएं आप मुझे व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एडवाइस एंड एडवाइस सो कंफ्यूजिंग वर्ड्स कैन आल्सो बी देयर सो टेल मी व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू ए डी वी आई सी ई एस ई एंड ए डी वी आई सी ई So this is just one set of confusing words. देखते हैं सबसे पहले किसका आंसर आता है. What okay. is the difference? So Atul is saying that Orang Zeb is orthodox. Okay. बिल्कुल वो था. Nice insight. बिल्कुल. All right, sir. So it will take quite some time till they answer. Would you please explain us these two words? Okay. ठीक है. तो मेरे को जैसे मैंने जैसे मैंने थोड़ी देर पहले आपको बताया कि एसोसिएशन मेथड तो मुझे बड़ी कंफ्यूजन थी कि इन दोनों में क्या फर्क है और कैसे याद रखूं इनको. बार बार पढ़ता था तो मुझे बार बार हेल्प मिलती थी कि इनमें से एक नाउन है और एक वर्ब है चलो इतना तो समझ आ गया कि एक नाउन है और एक वर्ब है लेकिन कौन सा नाउन है और कौन सा वर्ब है ये याद रखना हमेशा भूल जाता था मैं तो मैंने क्या सोचा कि जैसे यहां पे ये वाइस लिखा हुआ है तो वाइस से मुझे याद आता था मेरी वाइस प्रिंसिपल सो वाइस प्रिंसिपल जो है वो एक नाउन है ये तो पता ही है हमें कि कोई इंसान वो नाउन होता है तो यहां से मैंने याद रख लिया कि दिस इज अ नाउन and the other one is definitely a verb can you give us sir, it's wonderful <laughs> can you give us one example sir advice Infinite. so so when we say that uh, can you give me uh, an advice to do well in my cuet exam so yahan pe advice kya hua mai it's it will be a verb Uh, give can you me give me an, an advice? advice it will be a noun it will an be a advice noun. because yes. we are using an article with this right so give jo tha iske andar wo verb tha aur ma- maine jo advice word use kiya hai iske andar wo ye wala use karunga na ki ye wala right so your advice will make me or your advice uh, made me give score very good in the but that that is also the noun in that Hmm. Will hmm. you please advise me how to perform well in my yeah. exam? Yes, that is the verb uh, part of the uh, you know this advice and advice in this. Yes, so that was wonderful, sir. Can we come back to the question now? Yes, <laughs> right. So island dwellers, political advisor. So यहाँ पे ये जो है ये noun वाला है, ये verb वाला है जो है. And uh, unconventional lifestyle, orthodox attitude, island dweller, and political. I think it should be unconventional lifestyle. जो कि बहिमिन लोग होते हैं, जैसे बहिमिन singer. आप लोगों ने कुछ songs में भी देखा होगा. तो वो बहिमिन means that कि जो unconventional, non-regular kind of singing करते हैं, उसके लिए हम बहिमिन word use कर लेते हैं. And right. And आजकल बहो बहो style बहुत ज़्यादा है in everything. Yes, yes, बहो सबको exactly. पता होगा. So mm-hmm. that is right. derived from bohemian only. Right. Okay. Unconventional lifestyle. Mm-hmm. राइट हम एक क्वेश्चन और शायद ले सकते हैं अभी एंड लेट्स डिस्कस सम पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन जो हमने अभी तक नहीं किया है सॉल्व कैन आई फिगर ऑफ स्पीच ये है इसको देख सकते हैं फिगर ऑफ स्पीच को यस ये अभी तक हमने क्वेश्चन नहीं किया अभी थोड़ी देर पहले हम इसके बारे में बात कर रहे थे सो द रेस्ट ऑफ क्वेश्चन दे वुड हैव यूज्ड ओनली वन फिगर ऑफ स्पीच एज यू कैन सी सो आई थिंक दिस इज द लिटिल बिट द टफेस्ट वन सो हियर यू हैव four questions in a way because they have given you match the following so let's read it sir mm-hmm. okay boys boots are big so when boys jump mm-hmm. can you see a repetition of b here mm-hmm. boys in boots and mm-hmm. big and so mm-hmm. boys jump so what should it be let us see who's going to answer this one let me read all the sentences should it be alliteration simile oxymoron and metaphor mm-hmm. before reading the option let me quickly tell you what these figures of speech are right So figures of speech are devices used to beautify language mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. so alliteration is repetition of a sound or a word again and again mm-hmm. write it down another is anaphora anaphora would be repetition of the same phrase again and again like we are the hollow man we are the stuffed man so why are we saying we are we are again and again that will be anaphora this is alliteration figures of speech are best uh, remembered if you put all the confusing definitions together and see the difference between them so alliteration is a repetition of sound simile 
एंड मेटाफर दे आर बोथ कंपेरिजन इन टू टू थिंग्स टू इन कॉन्ग्रुअस थिंग इट कैन बी बट देर विल बी सम काइंड ऑफ सिमिलैरिटी बिटवीन द टू इट्स जस्ट दैट इन सिमिली द सिमिलैरिटी विल बी एक्सप्लिसिटली गिवन टू यू बहुत ही क्लियर आपको दिखेगा कि इन दोनों में एक कंपेरिजन है बिकॉज देर विल बी अज ऑफ देर विल बी यूसेज ऑफ वर्ड्स लाइक एज एंड लाइक पर मेटाफोर में कंपेरिजन में एज और लाइक नहीं होगा टू गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल अगर मैं कहूँ शी इज लाइक अ रोज अब यहाँ मैंने लाइक like बोला है वो रोज के जैसी है इफ आई से शी इज रोज सो हियर देर इज अम्प्लिसिट कंपेरिजन विदाउट यूजिंग एज और लाइक तो जहां इम्प्लिसिट या हिडन कंपेरिजन होगा वो होगा मेटाफोर जहां पे एक्सप्लिसिट कंपेरिजन होगा एज और लाइक के साथ दैट विल बी योर सिमिली नेक्स्ट इज ऑक्सीमरॉन नाउ वेन यू रिमेंबर वेन यू ट्राई टू रिमेंबर द डेफिनेशन ऑफ ऑक्सीमरॉन आप इसके साथ दो और लिटरी डिवाइसेज याद कर सकते हैं विच इज पैराडॉक्स एंड एंटीथीसिस क्योंकि इन सभी में दो ऑपोजिट वर्ड्स को या आइडियाज को या नोशंस को एक साथ कॉन्ट्रास्टिंगली uh, रखा जाता है जक्सटपोज किया जाता है सो ऑक्सीमरॉन इज यूज ऑफ टू कॉन्ट्राडिक्टी वर्ड्स टूगेदर लाइक लविंग हेट हेटिंग लव बर्निंग आइस If it is ice, how can it be burning? But yes, poets do it. They do all. Garma garam kulfi. Garma garam kulfi. That is funny. <laughs> so uh, you can use two opposite words together. Poets often do it, and that is known as oxymoron. जब दो word opposite हो, वो oxymoron. जब दो phrases opposite हो, in the same sentence or in the same place, that will be a paradox. So let us now read the option. अब आपको definitions पता है? अब ये और easy होगा आपके लिए guess करना. What is the right uh, figure of speech employed in these sentences the sweet curd tasted like ice cream can sweet curd taste like an ice cream so we know that curd is actually sour it's not sweet to ye clearly oxymoron ka example hai the timid fighter stole our heart and the last one should be the big umbrella was our only shade okay so let's match them now ab hame b pata hai b ka third one let's see the option sir mm -hmm. थिंग So let's see. The big umbrella was our only shade. The timid fighter stole our heart. Boys' boots are big, so when boys jump. So will you help me with this the one, sir? The big umbrella was our only shade. इसको हम कर सकते हैं. Uh, I think there is a problem in this. The uh, big umbrella was our only shade. Alliteration. Should we alliteration? I, I think it should be. Shouldn't it be like metaphor? I don't know. I feel there is something wrong with this yes, particular yeah. question because. This one should go with alliteration for yeah, sure. Yeah, this this should be alliteration for sure. The sweet curd tasted like ice cream. Should definitely uh, be also. Okay, like ice cream. This right, can it's, be it's, a it's it's simile. Simile. It's simile. Yes. Because of like, it is simile. Because of like. So see, this can also happen within the same sentence. They can use different figures of speech. Just as we were struggling with this one, you may also come across this confusion. So then you have to change your choice. अब यहाँ पे स्वीट कर ऑक्सीमरॉन भी हो सकता है बट बिकॉज ऑफ लाइक वी कैन टेक इट विथ सिमिली ऑल्सो लेट अस सी इफ वी हैव सेकंड वन फॉर द बी सेकंड बी एंड फर्स्ट ए इज फर्स्ट सो यू कैन गो विद राइट चॉइस सो यू कैन गो विद द थर्ड चॉइस right okay what is the issue atul why are you so confused we are trying to simplify it as much as possible right sir i think we've discussed all the questions mm -hmm. let's now sum up the session everyone who's scared of rc or the other question please try to understand you have to be very calm and composed while giving this exam this is not going to be from any kind of syllabus that you've completed this book and you'll be able to do the exam it is simple english they are simply going to check your aptitude you've all done english language at some point of time in your school and trust me you can easily manage this okay literary devices is something that may be new for you you can watch the video you can see all the definitions and example and you would easily get through this particular section right so we always say that confidence is very very important for uh, any of the exam and uh, 
कॉन्फिडेंस ऐसी चीज तो है नहीं कि जो आप मार्केट से जाके दस किलो या पांच किलो या पचास किलो खरीद लोगे कॉन्फिडेंस uh, बेटा एक ऐसी चीज है जो कि आपको uh, uh, सोचना पड़ता है जबकि मुझे कॉन्फिडेंस चाहिए इस चीज के लिए वो सिर्फ तब सोचना पड़ता है जब आपके पास ऑप्शन होती है कि इस चीज को करने की मेरे पास ऑप्शन है नहीं देन यू नीड टू गैदर कॉन्फिडेंस इन दैट वॉट इफ आई आस्क यू दैट डू यू नीड कॉन्फिडेंस टू ईट योर ब्रेकफास्ट नो यू डोंट यू नो सो ये इस इस पर्टिकुलर एंट्रेंस एग्जाम को आप ये मानकर चलो कि ये ऑप्शन नहीं है ये यू हैव टू डू इट वेन देर इज अन देर इज वेन देर इज दिस idea in your mind that you have to excel and you have to score in this exam then you don't need to gather confidence you know there is confidence uh, you'll find within yourself and yes there is this one element which can help in uh, empowering that confidence is your mocks your practice so abhi bhi time hai please aram se baith ke distractions ko piche hata ke dur karke khud se mock क्रिएट करो एनवायरमेंट घर के अंदर एंड उस पर्टिकुलर टाइम के लिए अपने फोन्स को स्विच ऑफ करके टेल योर मॉम एंड डैड कि हमें डिस्टर्ब नहीं करें एंड बैठ के वो पेपर को एग्जामिनेशन पर्टिकुलर तरीके से एनवायरमेंट क्रिएट करके उस एग्जाम को करो और एग्जाम को वो मॉक करना उतना इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है जितना उसको एनालाइज करना इंपॉर्टेंट है जितना टाइम आप किसी भी मॉक को करने में लगाओगे उससे डबल टाइम उसको एनालाइज करने में लगाओ कौन सा क्वेश्चन गलत हुआ क्यों गलत हुआ क्या मेरी स्ट्रैटेजी ठीक थी कि मैंने यहां से पेपर शुरू किया या मैं कुछ और कर सकता था अगर आपको लगता है कि कुछ बेटर कर सकते थे तो नेक्स्ट मॉक को फटाफट से करो डिफरेंट स्ट्रैटेजी के साथ एंड प्रॉबेबली यू विल बी एबल टू कम अप विद वन सच स्ट्रैटेजी व्हिच विल हेल्प यू टू स्कोर बेटर इन योर एंट्रेंस एग्जाम absolutely right sir so everyone who's been saying that i'm scared i have a fear of the exam i don't know how i, I will do the english section again your only solution is why don't you go through that fear now itself by doing the mocks and getting to know about your weaknesses so it will help you a lot get uh, you know it, the environment should be very conducive sit on your table be freshened up keep your mind on the screen and focus on the exam give one mock within the same time frame and you will be very close to judging how you will perform in the exam also yes when you are giving the, just like ma'am said within the time frame that matters do not give mock uh, with a open time limit right you start the timer and then see that within 45 minutes yes sir. within 45 minutes you complete your paper and then see that how many questions you are able to uh, attempt with confidence absolutely right sir right so uh, we hope that the session was uh, helpful for you if you want more such session if you found it helpful do not uh, forget to like share and subscribe the channel and put your suggestion in the comment box if there was anything that we can do regarding this paper if you want any other help we will be more than glad to do that live so summing up for today that's all for today thank you so much thank you so much and god bless you all and all the very best and and stay happy and believe in yourself so all the very best for your exam 